Oh, hello. You're just in time for my daily quarantine happy hour. Hi, I'm Leslie. My name is Jason Weber, and I'm a sales rep and from Los Angeles, California. somebody who really appreciates whiskey, does a lot of tasting, but it's more than that, it's someone who can make other people's whiskey experience special. 2009, I met my wife, quickly discovered we were both Maker's Mark drinkers at the time, went out and got a ring made of Maker's Mark barrel stave, and got married. Hey, over here, pick me. I'm full of caramel and sweets and fruit. You're gonna love me! Rather than just tell you why I think I should be the world's top whiskey taster, instead, I thought I'd just show you. I am the world's okayest whiskey taster. I was pretty content with that title. And then I found out that the Bardstown Bourbon Company was trying to trying to crown the, the world's best, most fantastic, the greatest whiskey taster on the planet. Well, that's me. It's me. I like to, uh, smell with my mouth open uh, so I don't burn my olfactory nerve with the ethics. Very full bodied, oily, coats the tongue. Oh my gosh, the full bodiness of that. The sweetness, but not too sweet, unreal. Wow, this is a completely unique bourbon. I mean, I'm walking into every little hole in the wall liquor store in this country every time I travel. I want to meet the people behind it, everything that has to do with it. I mean, when I tell you that I nerd out more for Steve Nally than I do for Steve Martin, you know I'm telling the truth. Seth and I are finishing the bottle of Michael Mark. Thanks for Steve for sharing that with us. Guys, and that's... Okay, hello everyone, and welcome back to the regional semifinals for World's Top Whiskey Taster. My name is Sam Montgomery. I am the national brand ambassador for Bardstown Bourbon Company and your host for this evening's event. Last night, we hosted the regional for Chicago, uh, had a great turnout and crowned a, a well-deserved winner the night before in Tennessee. And tonight we have contestants from the Indiana area competing to be the regional champion for World's Top Whiskey Taster. The winner tonight will move on to our finals, hosted right here at our distillery, located in the bourbon capital of the world, to compete against the other regional winners to become the world's top whiskey taster. So what do these guys have to do to become the regional champion tonight? Well, Bardstown Bourbon Company sent each contestant a challenge kit. They each have this open in front of them, ready to go as I speak, and inside these kits are four mystery whiskeys that correspond to four challenges that each contestant will go through. We are going to challenge the, their palates to see if they can determine proof, age, whiskey type, and finishing barrel. Each challenge will increase in difficulty as well as increase in potential points. Scores will be posted live in real time after each challenge. When the four challenges are complete, each contestant will have three minutes to present a flight that they personally have curated to our guest judges. Their flight presentations will really show their personalities as, as whiskey lovers and therefore will be worth the most amount of points. We are currently broadcasting this event live to our Facebook page and YouTube channel. I've got it out in front of me right here to see comments as they're coming in live in real time. So if you are watching from home to support one of the two contestants that we have tonight, send some words of encouragement, send some cheers, uh, tell us what you want them to hear while they are going through these challenges, and I will shout those out during these challenges. So with that being said, I'd like to introduce you folks at home, our two contestants that we have this evening, it's gonna be a real tight race. Uh, so uh, Dave and Jeff, just give a little wave to everybody as I say your name. Um, so those are the two right there. Uh, we have David Zobo, or there he is right there, and Jeff Clark. So those are our two Indiana contestants competing to be the regional champion. 
Uh, they've got a lot of whiskey in front of them, ready to taste and challenge their palates. Guys, best of luck to the both of you. Uh, I can't wait to see which one of you is going to be coming here to our distillery to compete to be the world's top whiskey taster. So uh, with that said, uh, if the two of you would like to go ahead and grab the bottle that is labeled number one, uh, open that bottle up, give yourselves a little pour, but just keep it right there for a minute. Don't taste it or smell it just yet. Uh, I want to give those whiskeys a chance to breathe and air out while I go over the rules. So for challenge number one, uh, the challenge is called high or low. With this challenge, each contestant must determine if the mystery whiskey is either higher or lower than 100 proof. One point will be given for the correct answer, which is high or low, and a bonus point will be awarded if the contestant can guess the exact proof within two points. For example, if the said whiskey is 90, any answers between 88 and 92 will receive a bonus point. We are going to put two minutes on the screen for the contestants and, and everybody at home to see. Uh, the contestants have to taste, evaluate, and submit their answers before the timer runs out. So David, Jeff, do you guys understand and, and have your whiskeys ready? Give me a thumbs up if you are good to go. Awesome, I got two thumbs up there. Um, so Nick behind the scenes is going to bring up that timer and on my countdown, you guys can start evaluating those whiskeys. In three, two, one, best of luck to the both of you guys in the first challenge. So while these two are tasting those whiskeys and trying their best to determine the, uh, the proof, uh, I wanna tell everybody at home what the two tonight are going to uh, compete for, or what the winner tonight will compete for when they come here to our distillery to, to try to win that title of the World's Top Whiskey Taster. So uh, the World's Top Whiskey Taster, once they win, when they come here and win against the other regional winners, will win $20,000 in cash, a scholarship to Moonshine University to become an executive bourbon steward, and the opportunity to come to the distillery and blend their own bourbon with our team and our master distiller, Steve Nally. Not only that, but we will also send the winner to some of the best whiskey festivals in the country to represent Bardstown Bourbon Company as an ambassador. So a lot on the line for these guys here as they're going through this challenge. And I can personally say, uh, I don't know what $20,000 in cash feels like, but I do know what the other prizes feel like, uh, blending bourbon, uh, the executive bourbon stewardship, and traveling around the country to these whiskey festivals. And it's an incredible opportunity, um, something definitely to be excited for, uh, definitely would have me practicing my whiskey skills uh, leading up to these competitions. So I can't wait to see which one of these guys is going to have a chance here after these events. Um, so, it looks like they, they are uh, looking into their cameras, like they're confident, they're ready, they've submitted their answers, and our timer is running out here. Uh, looks like we've got 12 seconds left. We're going to let that timer run out and then get to the good part of, of seeing the score and seeing how these two did. So, wow. Our designated scorekeeper tonight is receiving those answers and updating those scores, uh, which happens to be our marketing director, Laurel Altman. Uh, thank you, Laurel, for, for uh, signing up to be the scorekeeper tonight. Uh, I want to give her a minute to tally that up and update our live scoreboard. In the meantime, I would like to introduce everyone to our first guest judge of the night. Uh, we have Sean McBride our state manager for the Indiana State for Bardstown Bourbon Company that is here to judge these two flight presentations when we are done with the challenges. Sean, thanks for being here and, and uh, volunteering to, to guest judge tonight. How are you feeling? Oh man, I'm feeling great. Uh, an honor and a pleasure to be here and doing this. And this is super exciting. Uh, some fellow Hoosiers competing for 
a world's top whiskey taster is uh, unbelievable. It's uh, great. I'm proud of both you guys for going through the the process and uh, and getting there and uh, being able to uh, show off your skills and uh, and show everybody that the Hoosier State isn't second place to Kentucky. <laughs> I love it. Thanks, Sean. And and Sean, I know that you you are also an executive of Bourbon Steward. Uh, what would you say to these guys that are competing for that prize? How did you like going through that um, that certification program with Moonshine University? Uh, Moonshine University does an amazing job of educating you and really opening up your mind to what your palate can do. Uh, it's so much more about sensory than it is knowing product and just being able to dive into what your olfactory, what your nose is telling you, what your tongue is telling you is so much more important really than knowing what the brands are. Because once you can dive into that, it really, really helps you start to dissect what those bourbons actually are and where they came from, how old they are, everything. It's amazing. You guys will love it. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. Well, we will check back in with you uh, when it is time for these guys to present their flights. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, before we reveal the scores after round one, I would like to tell Jeff and David here what their mystery whiskey was that they had in their glass. So the challenge was to determine if the proof was, was either higher or lower than 100 proof. And I'm here to tell you that the bottle was in fact Pikesville Straight Rye Whiskey, which is 110 proof. So the correct answer would have been high. And if you were going for the bonus point, any answers between 108 and 112 would have given you both points for the round. So let's see how those scores reflect after the first challenge here. Okay, in a tight race it is. So Jeff got both points on this round. Uh, congratulations, Jeff. And David, you managed to get the first point and one point behind is, is real tight because we have a lot more points to dole out here. Um, and it is truly anybody's game at this point. So congratulations to you both. And we're going to move right along into challenge number two. So Jeff and David, please grab bottle number two that we gave you in the kits and go ahead and give yourselves a little pour of the second whiskey and make sure you keep that whiskey firmly on the table until I give you the go while I explain the rules. So challenge number two is called a young or old. In this challenge, each contestant must determine the age of the whiskey. The whiskey will either be younger than four years or older than eight years. So I'm giving you a little bit of a window here to make it somewhat easier on the two of you. Uh, if you believe it is younger than four years, your answer will be young. And if you believe the whiskey to be older than eight years, your answer will be old. If you want to shoot for the bonus point on this round, you have to try and guess the exact age. If you're within a year of that age, then you will get a bonus point. So. If it is in fact a two year bourbon, uh, then any guess between one and three would get you that bonus point. And same as challenge number one, we're going to give the two of you two minutes for this challenge to taste, evaluate, and submit your answers. Can I get a thumbs up from David and Jeff that they understand and are ready to go? Thank you guys. All right, so Nick, if you wanna pull up that timer, and on my countdown, I will let you guys begin. In three, two, one, begin. All right, best of luck in challenge two. We'll see if, uh, if Jeff can keep the lead here. Uh, real excited to see that. While they are evaluating those whiskeys, I do wanna shout out some Facebook comments that we are getting in. Uh, we've got a ton of people watching our live stream and commenting. Uh, Sydney Condon says, good luck, Jeff. Um, Samantha Scally Humbert says, uh, more cheers for Jeff. So Jeff, it looks like you're getting a lot of support here. Ed Rodriguez, our state manager uh, that was guest judging last night uh, in the Chicago Regional 
said that he is rooting for the both of you guys. Uh, so sweet of Ed. And we have tons of people watching. Uh, Jimmy Hackney said, let's go Jeff Clark. Represent the 1980s rock and roll era with greatness. <laughs> oh, a great comment for Jeff uh, from Jimmy. Uh, guys, just wanna let you know we have one minute left. One minute left. Uh, Todd Smith is also here to support Jeff. Uh, Kurt Condon for Jeff. Uh, let's see. Uh, and and a one for Dave. Dave, you've got some fans showing up too. Jenny Kuntz Wamsley said, go Dave. You got this old buddy. So uh, both contestants getting some good feedback from friends and family at home. Please don't stop the feedback. You know, it's hard to, to produce the energy that we would have been able to with a live event. Uh, and it's 2020, so we're, we're doing everything virtually now. Please send in your, your comments and let these guys know that you're watching and supporting them. Um, so it looks like we only have about 15 seconds left. Uh, I can see the guys on my screen are, are looking pretty confident and, and ready to see how they did in challenge two. So that is great. I will let the countdown finish here in just a few seconds. And while our scorekeeper is tallying up those points, it is time to introduce you all to the next guest judge. So uh, our second guest judge for the evening is Mr. Brandon Hobbenstein. Uh, he goes by Hobby to anybody who knows him. Hobby is our beverage director uh, for the company. So we have a beautiful restaurant here and an extraordinary bar program. He is responsible for all the cocktails on that menu and anything cocktail related that we do in the market across the country. So Hobby, thank you for joining us tonight to judge these guys' flight presentations. Are you enjoying a cocktail while you are uh, judging? Uh, no, I am uh, just taking it straight out of the bottle. Well, uh, you know, by way of glassware, I'm um, having, having a beer and a whiskey because uh, it's oh. just one of those days. Um, it's, it's my pleasure to be here. I have not judged one of these yet. Uh, I believe this is the third one, correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, it's, it's really great. Uh, I am not envious of you guys going head to head. Uh, I have a pretty ridiculous record of doing very well at a poker table until I go head to head. Uh, so hopefully <laughs> you guys are, are great at going head to head. We'll see who, who wins. I love it. A shot and a beer for Hobby. Jealous. Uh, great. Thanks, Hobby, for uh, joining us tonight. I uh, can't wait to see your feedback for these two gentlemen after they present their flights. Uh, and before we reveal the scores, let's reveal the mystery whiskey. So you two had to determine uh, the age of the mystery whiskey in your glass, whether it was young or old, and then your best guess at the exact age. And the mystery whiskey is Calumet 10 year. So for that bonus point, you had to guess between nine and 11. And to get the first point, you had to guess old. I see some, some uh, size of exasperation, like maybe we weren't successful this one. So let's, <laughs> some heads down as well. Let's see how the scores reflect after challenge two. Okay, so Jeff managed to get at least one point on this round. Uh, David, tough break on this one. Uh, I know it is tough. These things, you know, people have so much confidence when they're drinking straight from the bottle, right? People said, ah, oh, man, this drink's like a 10-year, but would they know it if they weren't told it was a 10-year, right? And, and that's the, the point of the competition. So uh, don't worry, David, two points behind is, is nothing. We're about to start doling out a lot more points. So you have a chance to make a comeback and I'm rooting for the both of you. Uh, let's move right in to challenge number three. Two more challenges to go through. Uh, so guys, grab the challenge number three bottle and go ahead and give yourselves a little pour. You should know how it works by now. Just keep that right there until I give you the go and I will explain what we're doing in this challenge. So challenge number three 
is called Witch Whiskey. In this challenge, you must determine what type of whiskey you have in your glass. And we're going to help you out only a little bit by giving you a multiple choice. So the whiskey is either a bourbon, a rye, a scotch, or an Irish. Uh, correct answers will be given one point and a bonus of five points will be given to anyone who can take it a step further and guess what that label is. So for example, if it is a scotch and you guessed Johnny Walker and it is indeed a Johnny Walker, you will receive six total points for the round. Um, once again, we're gonna have two minutes on the clock for you guys to taste, evaluate, and submit your answers. Are the two of you ready to go and understand the rules? Give me a thumbs up if you are. All right, I'm real excited about this one, guys. So I'm gonna have Nick bring up the timer. There is our timer and in uh, on my countdown, you guys can begin. So three, two, one, taste those whiskeys. All right. Uh, so those guys have two minutes to determine which whiskey type they have in their glass. And while they are doing that, I have one last and final guest judge to introduce to everyone. And that is the lovely Miss Ingrid Gentry, who is our chief financial officer for Bardstown <laughs> Bourbon Company and a bourbon nerd herself. So Ingrid, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, are you excited to see these presentations and how are you feeling tonight? I'm feeling great and I can't tell you how glad I am to meet you, Jeff, and you, David, and it's just so fun to watch you all do your thing. Uh, Sam's giving me a lot more credit than I deserve. I'm really in the camp of I either like it or I don't like it, but I mostly like it when I have, when I have a little glass of bourbon. Sadly, I'm at the office, so I'm going to wait till I get home to have my cocktail. So <laughs> welcome, everybody. Yeah, and thank you, Ingrid, for, for joining us tonight. Um, she, she really is, is a modest person, uh, but I've, I've seen her drink some bourbon cocktails before, and I think any whiskey person definitely has their preferences, right, of what they like and what they don't like, and, and that's kind of uh, how we vetted our contestants to, to join this evening. So, um, Ingrid, thank you for, for being a part of the Indiana Regional tonight. And I am excited to see your feedback on what these two present uh, shortly here. So it looks like we have about 20 seconds left on the timer, guys. So time to get your answers in. Uh, I can't wait to see if either of you will be the first contestant across any of the three competitions that we've done so far to guess the label. Um, so we've got a few seconds left here and we will reveal that whiskey and show what the scores have. And while we let Laurel tally those scores and update our live scoreboard, let's see if anybody else is sending some words of encouragement for these guys. Uh, it looks like Jason Slavin said, all the way from Rockford, Illinois, Go, Jeff. That's awesome. So you're getting some, some Illinois uh, can, uh, fans uh, supporting you, Jeff. That is great. Um, looks like we have um, about 40 people viewing with us tonight. Andrea M. Scally Stoffel, what a name, uh, said whoop, whoop. So uh, Andrea is excited and, and watching. Uh, thank you, Andrea. Uh, Missy Clark Haas says, go Jeff. Shireen Wagley says, Jeff. Jeff, let's just, let's take you off mute for a second and see how many people you paid uh, to, to send in some comments uh, during this live feed. Jeff, what's going on? How come you got so many fans? I, I've just had a lot of support. It's been, it's been great. It's been really great. A lot of good friends, a lot of text messages today. Just a lot of people been reaching out. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to see that uh, you got so many people to, to um, chime in and, and support the competition and, and support what you're doing here. It's, it's great to see that. 
Um, so guys, it looks like uh, our, our scorekeeper had some technical difficulties um, with her internet connection and getting back in. So um, instead of revealing the score uh, right now, uh, we're gonna let her catch up a little bit. Nick uh, from behind the scenes is, is working uh, just tirelessly. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sam. Um, Jeff and David, if you could do, if you could send me the um, answers, what we're going to do right now is give you. We, we completely understand here at Bar Sam Bum Company how hard this is for this competition. So what we've actually got is a little share um, of you from Samantha Montgomery giving a go at tasting herself. So whilst we share that video, and uh, if you guys could send me your answers, that'd be wonderful, please. Uh, Nick, you might have cut out just a tiny bit there. Are they sending their answers through the Zoom chat, correct? Yes, please, to me. Okay, so David and Jeff, uh, go back into that chat and instead of choosing Laurel, uh, choose Nick Lewis, Nicholas Lewis to send your answers to. And we'll get those scores updated shortly. Nick is going to play um, an awesome little video in the meantime for everybody at home. Thanks for understanding and sticking with us. All right, Danny Barstown here with Sam there for you in spirits, Montgomery. We have a little showdown, uh, a preview of what you might see in the world's top whiskey taster. So we each have the same pour in front of us in a Glencairn, and it is in this mystery bottle that is covered that we have not seen, we have no idea. We're gonna nose, taste, analyze, come up with our best pick, and we will see who the best taster in this building or room is. Cool. Great. Awesome. Are we, uh, Should we talk about it? <laughs> I don't want to lead you down a path. Rich, honeyed, uh, not crazy strong on the nose. Obviously, it's colored, so we can, it's seen some barrel age. It's certainly not a tequila. It's, it's got rich bourbon-like notes of caramel, yeah. vanilla. I call it traditional. I don't think we got a finish going on here. Uh, a little ethanol in the nose, so maybe I take that back a little heat, but nothing crazy. I don't think we're at cast strength land at all. There's some pretty good body on it. Yeah, wow. Uh, take back the cast strength land. It was not a lot of alcohol in the nose, but that is hot on the hot on the palate. Uh, long finish, certainly a, a good alcohol content on this one. I don't think I don't think it's crazy up there. When's the last time you had a drink? I, I'm gonna call, so this is our first disagreement. This is good. Uh, I'm gonna say it's at least, it's over 100. I think it's at least 100. I don't okay. know if it's quite cash strength. I would say it's like 110. That's fair. That's about where I put it. Okay, not a disagreement. I'd say 110, maybe. E each it's of us. It's spicy, but I don't think it's. Okay, let's go age. I'm not getting a ton of wood. Uh, oak notes, I think this is, is at least four years, if not... Six. <laughs> six years. Six years? I think it's about six years. Uh-huh. Yeah. Golden kind of color. There's still some yellow on there. So six year, good proof. Uh, let's think mash bill. We're, we're thinking this is in the bourbon land. I think it's a spicy one. I would say like a, like a rye. It's, it's definitely not a weeded, per, I, I think. I think it's got some good spice. In summary, I, I would say the rye content's not crazy. No, like 10 to 15. All that being equal, nice citrus notes on it too. I do think this is on the younger side. You wanna throw something out there? I don't know. I like really feel like it's six years old. Uh, so like brands that come to mind are like Heaven Hill six year old, but we haven't had that in a while. So, and it also tastes higher than 100 proof. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to think of brands that are over 100 proof, maybe six to 10 years old. It's not a crap bourbon either. I don't think it's in not the that I family. Would, I think it's a good bourbon. I think it came from like a really good producer. Yeah, that's a good point. Right? It's quality. I don't know if it's like a craft producer, not that there aren't good craft producers, but because Knob Creek is, is calf strength, right? I don't think it's Knob Creek. It's not in the bean family. It could be wild turkey. Uh, could be wild turkey, but I don't get the huge cinnamon on it. 
I'm gonna say some sort of Old Forester uh, foolproof, like a 1910. I'm gonna call it the 1890s. No, that's lower proof. I'm gonna go in the old faux family, uh, the 1920. I'm gonna say, I think it's too spicy to be Heaven Hill. I really think it's a wild turkey expression. Yeah? Yeah. That's fair. So maybe let's just, let's just say wild turkey 101. Bourbon. You nailed it. Close. Oh, Very good. Very I should have stuck with my high proof. You talked me out of it. That's awesome. Well, winner. <laughs> All right, well, while uh, I hope you all at home enjoyed that uh, friendly coworker banter <laughs> between Danny, Ca uh, Danny Calloway, Danny Bartstown and I, uh, that's, that's actually how we uh, came up with the idea for World Stop Whiskey Taster. Uh, not with that video, but doing something really similar here uh, behind the bar, you know, uh, we all, came on to Bardstown Bourbon Company at the same time on the beverage team, uh, Brandon Hobenstein, Dan Calloway, and myself. And we're already uh, bourbon lovers to begin with, but, you know, uh, really wanted to become professionals and, and master tasters, if you will. So as a fun kind of end of night exercise, which helped us uh, kind of unwind and uh, sharpen our whiskey palate skills, we would often give each other some uh, blind tastings, right? And and within that, we would, uh, you know, give each other a, a rye, a bourbon, a scotch, and, and do a lot of challenges similar to what you guys are seeing in these challenges that we have during regionals. Um, so it really kind of was a, uh, a bar napkin kind of idea and, and story. And it's, it's so wonderful to see it come to life. So, uh, Thank you everybody for, for sticking with us through these uh, technical difficulties. We've got everybody back online now. Um, and I am just getting confirmation from our scorekeeper, Laurel, that she is um, receiving answers. Um, it looks like uh, maybe she doesn't have both of them ready. Um, so I'm going to ask her to, to maybe uh, chime in. There is a face behind, behind the curtain tonight, folks. Um, so we're going to hear from Laurel and see what's going on with her scores. Laurel, how's it looking? Hey guys, sorry about that technical difficulty there. My computer just crashed, so we're back up and running. So I've got an answer from Jeff. I just need to get an answer from David uh, on challenge three. So just waiting to hear from David. So um, if you can, Hit me your uh, your answer, and I'll get your scores in. Yeah, David, if you can privately message her uh, or let us know if you have done so already. And and if we don't get some uh, some solution here in a second, we will just move on uh, to challenge number four. I got it. So you give got me it. one second and I'll okay. okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, it, it is 2020, as we all are uh, very well aware of, right? Um, we would have loved to have had these uh, competitions live, bring all of the fans and family members out. But uh, we are, you know, trying the best we can to, to promote these virtually and, and still make it fun and engaging. But it is new territory for everybody, right? Um, and I think we're the first brand to do a competition of this size, an event of this size virtually. So obviously um, some issues are going to present themselves. We really appreciate you guys sticking with us. So the scores are ready. Talk about anticipation. Oh my God, these guys are pulling their hair out. Like tell us already. Um, so before I tell you guys what the scores are, let's tell you what the whiskey was and the whiskey uh, for challenge number three, which was which whiskey you had to determine if it was bourbon, rye, scotch, or Irish, and take your best stab at the label. 
was in fact bullet rye, something that I feel like the both of you are familiar with. I tried to give you guys somewhat of a softball. I know it's incredibly hard to do these things blind, um, but it was in fact a rye whiskey. And if you guessed bullet, then you got the potential six points for the round and our scores are ready at long last. So let's see where we're at after challenge three, please. That's from Indiana, guys. You, I hope you got it. <laughs> oh, it looks like Jeff uh, got a point. Let's see. I think we were three to one last time. So does that mean, David, you got both of those points on that round? Uh, that is uh, amazing. Maybe I'm not remembering what the last uh, scores were since we had that long pause in between. But this is great. You guys are one point between each other. Uh, Jeff has somehow maintained the lead this entire time, but David is trailing so close behind. And we have so many points to offer in challenge four and in the flight presentations that uh, truly uh, this is not uh, an obvious prediction of who's going to win here. So let's move right along and get to challenge four uh, before we have more internet problems. Uh, so. Challenge number four, uh, Jeff and David, go ahead and grab that bottle out of your kit. Pour yourselves a little sample while I go through the rules. Challenge number four is called Witch Finish. In this challenge, you must determine which whiskey is in your glass from the following Bardstown Bourbon Company collaboration releases. So Bardstown Bourbon Company has released many expressions in this category, but we're narrowing it down to three. You either have the Copper and Kings Sherry Finish, the Copper and Kings Orange Curacao Finish, or the Goodwood Walnut Ale uh, Finish in your glass. So, um, you know, even if you haven't had the chance to try any of these, uh, that finishing barrel is really going to influence that whiskey immensely with the notes of the previous spirit it used to have in that barrel. So for those of you that don't know what a finished whiskey is or know anything about our collaboration releases, this is when we take an aged bourbon. I think the youngest one that we've done is nine years and we finish it in a uh, barrel that used to hold a previous spirit. And within that title of that expression, you know exactly what kind of spirit it held before. So in this, case it was either a beer uh, a barrel that held a beer a sherry or orange curacao so this round is worth five points all or nothing no bonus question if you can get this right either one of you over the other one uh, it's going to give you an incredible lead going into the presentations so we're going to give you two minutes once again on the timer uh, Jeff and David can you give me a thumbs up that you are ready to go Love it. Uh, wishing both of you the best of luck. And Nick, if you could bring the timer up on screen for these guys, I'll give my countdown before you guys can go. Uh, so in three, two, and one, go taste those whiskeys and try to determine which finish you have in your glass. Um, so for all these guys have two minutes. Uh, and I've got two minutes to chat with you all uh, watching from home. I wanna tell you guys a little bit more about our latest release in this category, which is our Orange Curacao release. So one of the options that these guys have is the collaboration that we did with Copper and Kings, finishing a nine year Tennessee bourbon in Copper and Kings Orange Curacao barrels. So. One thing that we do that's very unique to our finished whiskeys that nobody else is doing is that we really preserve uh, those barrels before they get to us. So once Copper and Kings dumps that orange carousel, we're actually pumping those barrels with argon to eliminate any oxygen, uh, like super saran wrapping them and getting them uh, quickly to us before that they can dry out. So that when we get those barrels, they're wet, they're saturated, right? The orange carousel is still stuck in the staves of that barrel. So when we put the bourbon in, it's really pulling that juice back out as it ages for over, uh, for at least 18 months and uh, just absorbing so much influence from that previous spirit. 
if you are a fan of a of an old fashioned, which I feel like if you're watching this competition, then you are. Uh, this is the best base spirit you could possibly use for a top shelf old fashioned. Almost could skip the orange peel on top to make the best old fashioned ever. And guys, it looks like we have 20 seconds left on the timers. If you want to go ahead and get your answers in, uh, we'll check back in, make sure that those answers were received and confirmed before we reveal scores. I uh, really hope that you guys um, are feeling confident on this one. Uh, as the last sipping challenge before you guys present your flights. Um, so can't wait to see how you guys are going to do after this round. And uh, I see David and Jeff kind of kicking back and relaxing like they've got their answers in. So hopefully we see some uh, points on the board following. And we're going to give Laurel a second who is connected and, and safe within this Zoom room right now. Uh, but she's gonna take just a second to uh, update that scoreboard after the fourth challenge. And while we do that, uh, I would just like to ask the contestants how they're feeling after each challenge. So I'm going to start with David. Uh, David, you've now completed all four challenges. You know, you didn't know what any of the challenges were going to be beforehand. So how do you feel uh, in difficulty wise? Uh, what was easiest? What was hardest? And, and how are you feeling going into the presentations? David? The easiest one... Uh was the rye, the third number three. I just mm -hmm. didn't know that it was bullet. Uh, the proof, I hit that one. I was just a little bit low. I thought it was wild turkey 101 because that's my faith. The hardest is what we just did. Okay, so you thought the challenge four was the hardest. That was kind of there by design. Uh, let's see what David thought uh, was the easiest and hardest for him. David, what do you think you struggled with the most and, and which one were you the most confident on? Are you talking me right now? I'm sorry, <laughs> Jeff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I swear I haven't had too much to drink, I, I promise. Jeff, how are you feeling after the first four challenges? I, I, I feel good. I, I'm with him. I thought the last one was was a lot harder. I thought it would be a little bit easier. I thought I could pick out some of the the, the, the different flavors a little bit easier. Um, it was just it was a very well it was just very well balanced and just delicious. But to try to find pick out those notes, that was that was a lot more challenging than I thought. Um, the easy one, number three, uh, just because of that mint, there was just such a strong mint on the rye. And so it, it right as soon as you put it up to your nose, you kind of thought, oh yeah, that's that's a rye. It was okay. So <laughs> some good some good feedback there. Um, well, let's uh, reveal the whiskey to you all, and then reveal your scores. So for the final sipping challenge, you guys were given three options: had to decide which collaboration you had in your glass, and the collaboration was the Goodwood Walnut Ale. So it was the beer finish. Oh, I, I, by their faces, it looks like maybe neither of them got this right. So let's see how those scores reflect after the final challenge. And it looks like, oh, it looks like we, uh, we got some scores. Uh, so, so Jeff is now at nine points and David is now at seven. So, uh, Good job to you guys. Uh, we're going to just go right into our flight presentations. Um, do you guys both have your bottles out and ready to present? Feeling maybe a little loose now <laughs> after tasting four whiskeys? Oh, Jeff is standing up, he's getting ready. I love it. So uh, we're actually gonna start with the score leader uh, with Jeff. So I'm gonna give him a second here to just get situated. And uh, to let uh, everybody know at home and to let Jeff and David uh, know as well, we are going to time, uh, put a timer on you guys for your presentations. You will have three minutes to present to the judges. Uh, Nick, who you guys all met earlier, uh, is working behind the scenes. He is going to put that three minute timer up to start. Uh, bring it back in to let you guys know when you have two minutes left. Once again, when you have one minute left, and then finally, when you have 10 seconds left, so you can know 
when to wrap up your presentations. I am really excited about this part of the competition because there are so many bourbons. There are so many whiskeys. I think the three that you choose and present will really uh, speak a lot to your whiskey personalities. And I can't wait to um, see exactly what that is. So let's ask uh, Jeff, our first presenter. Jeff, are you ready to present and have your bottles ready? Or do you want me to give you a few more seconds? Anything there? All right, I'm not hearing anything coming in. So I'm gonna ask you via the chat in case it's my internet. Um, and it looks like you guys are moving around again. Jeff, give me a thumbs up if you're ready to go. Okay, there's the thumbs up. Okay, so Nick is going to pull up the three minute timer. And uh, whenever you, you are ready, okay? I can hear you fine. You're doing great. Uh, so uh, there's your three minute timer. He's going to start it as soon as you start speaking. So whenever you are comfortable, go ahead and tell us what you got for your flight. First of all, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be a part of this opportunity. It has just been an amazing experience. And when I think about this, I think about, you know, part of this has just been putting this flight together. And it's been all about so You've got the person that's never, you know, kind of wants to get into the whiskey. And then you've got the experienced um, whiskey drinker. And what I started to think about it is, well, who doesn't like a good dessert? So with every dessert, you really need to start out with a really good base. And so for my first bourbon in this flight, I started out with Maker's Mark. What makes Maker's Mark just such a really great starter is it's a weeded bourbon. It's 90 proof. It's got 16% wheat. It's very soft and it's very approachable. But the best part about this is it's just got a front palate finish. See on the nose, you get caramel and you get vanilla. And what better way to start this out with than with caramel and vanilla? And then when you get it enter into the palate, boom, right there on the front, you're just going to start getting those, those caramel. You're going to get that vanilla. And then as it goes through, you're going to get a nice creaminess. And then it's just going to really coat that palate. And then that's going to lead us into the Elijah Craig Small Batch 94 proof. And what happens is, is we're actually going to take the wheat out of that and we're going to actually introduce a little bit of rye. It's just only 10% rye. So what that allows it is to just kind of increase a little bit of the spiciness and um, really start to just build up on that um, caramel and that vanilla. But now you actually start to get, see, oh yeah, when, in, in the nose, Oh yeah, you start to pick up um, a little bit of tree nuts, like some cashews and some peanuts. And really what happens is when that enters the palate, again, you're gonna pick up those caramels and those vanillas, but now as it starts to go through the mid palate, you actually get even more of the, the, the creaminess and you start to get more of a, uh, of, a, uh, of a nuttiness. And then you go into that finish where you start to get a really nice sweet cinnamon. How good is that? <laughs> so next we got, is the Old Forester 1910. And the Old Forester 1910, man, I mean, that is just chocolate. You know, that we're gonna actually increase the spice a little bit, but with that double barrel and that really heavy char, I mean, I still get chocolate. It's just so good. You get toffee, you get chocolate, and then when it goes into the palate, you're gonna actually get that chocolate, that toffee, toasted marshmallow, toasted caramel, it's just going to go right into the finish where that sweetness, um, that sweetness will just continue. And it's just actually like a really good dessert. So I present to you a whiskey's lover version of an ice cream sundae. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Jeff, that was an incredible theme. I, I love the, the concept of an ice cream sundae. And it's, it's really nice to see you start out with Maker's Mark because that's how I started out. Uh, drinking whiskey was with Maker's Mark. So I uh, always hold a special place in my heart. And, oh, yeah. and I love to see that. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Yeah, great job. I'm going to ask um, uh, Sean uh, if he has any feedback about what he thought of your presentation as well. Sean, what did you think of Jeff's flight that he presented? I think that's a very neat idea. I think uh, the 
flavor kind of contrast between each of them that build up to that uh, that chocolate, that kind of uh, hot fudge that goes on top of your ice cream sundae. I think that was a very creative way to put together a flight. Uh, and the use of uh, the different mash bills uh, was pretty solid going from a weeded bourbon to a high rye bourbon uh, and something that's uh, a little bit younger to a little bit older too, I think was uh, very creative. So good job. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, so we are going to uh, let uh, David this time present. David, you are uh, ready with your bottles. We're going to put the timer up on screen for you to see. Oh, he's got big pours too. Somebody's ready to unwind after the, after the pressure of this competition, I see. I love it. You and me both, David. <laughs> so uh, Nick is going to bring up that timer. Uh, same deal as with Jeff. Uh, you will see the timer start. You will see the timer come back on at two minutes, at one minute, and then at 10 seconds. So whenever you are ready, David, we will start that timer. Okay, here we go. Um, Thank you for all visiting tonight. And anyone that wants to participate at home, feel free to do so. So I started out with my perfect flight. When you talk about whiskey, all I hear is flavors. I would talk about bourbons straight up. I started my flight out with a nice Woodford. It's a 90.4 proof. It's a little hot when you start with it but it finishes real well. Uh, it will delight all of your friends. The second one that I found, it is a Bardstown Fusion Series 1. I'm gonna warn you, it's a little hot. It's a 98.9. They did an excellent job blending these whiskeys. While you pour it in your cup, let it breathe, let it get character. Read the side of the bottle, try to find all the ingredients, why you're smelling it, why you're tasting it. Hope you have a lot of fun with that. The third one I picked out is like hunting bears. A little hard to find, but when you find it, you're happy you found it. It's called Blanton's. It's a 93 proof, hand written on the label here. You know this is taken care of. It's a single barrel. It's a crowd pleaser. Every time I bring this out, my friends jump up and down and we have a good time. So if you want your friends to come back and enjoy pleasant conversations, I suggest to the novice whiskey drinker or the beginners, these three Kentucky straight bourbon whiskeys. Once again, I just want to thank Bardstown Distilleries for giving me this opportunity. It's been my pleasure doing it. I've had a lot of fun. I want to thank my family for all their support. And hey, let's start the evening. Cheers to you. Uh, cheers to you, David. Thank you so much. You were so delightful to listen to. <laughs> I can't tell if it's the cadence in your voice or just your personality, but uh, that was that was truly enjoyable. So I would like to ask uh, Hobby, our beverage director, if he has any feedback about your presentation. Hobby, what did you think? Uh, about David specifically? Yeah, or the two yeah. of them. I guess they've both presented now. If you have something to say for the both of them, that's that's just well, fine as well. Both of them were great. Uh, David's was great with um, very available bottles. Well, except for the Blantons, as he mentioned. Um, <clears throat> I, I love the theme of the dessert flights, uh, but the enthusiasm from David was really nice. Obviously, including a Bardstown bourbon bottle like isn't going to hurt you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's good. I want to know, do you all, have you all met before this or uh, are you strangers? It looks like they have not met. Yeah. Interesting. I know, I have not. 
Cool. And I didn't know how uh, intertwined the community is in Indiana in the, in the beverage world. I know a Jeff Clark, but he's not the one that I know. <laughs> nice. These guys are about an hour to an hour and a half away from each other. Both live in southern Indiana, but opposite sides of the state. Oh, cool. Okay. Awesome. All right. Uh, well, hopefully made some some friends over, uh, you know, shared interest of, of bourbon and whiskey <laughs> and certainly from uh, participating in World's Top Whiskey Taster. So uh, really excited to see uh, which one of you is moving on. But I think you guys have both done wonderful. Uh, thank you for participating. And in that spirit of gratitude, um, before we reveal the final scores, uh, I, I want to let everybody know because I got a little uh, tongue tied in the beginning uh, that uh, these presentations were worth 10 points. Uh, so Jeff and David were made well aware of what they were being judged on. Uh, but in hindsight to everybody watching at home, uh, they were being judged on their presentation skills and the thoughtfulness that went into their flights. So there were five pr uh, potential points for presentation, five potential points for thoughtfulness, which the judges were scoring them on. And I think that they both did wonderfully. Um, as it sits before the final scores, I believe uh, David had, or I'm sorry, Jeff had nine points and David had seven points. So it's um, you know a two point difference at this point in the competition with 10 points to give uh, to each of them potentially uh, with these flight presentations. So really could be either one of you that has crowned the regional champion here in just a few minutes. And I wish you all the best. Um, before we get to that, a uh, couple of people I want to thank uh, all of our guest judges, Javi, Sean, Ingrid, thank you for the feedback um, and, and volunteering your time to judge this competition tonight. It was a delight to have you all. Uh, David and Jeff, thank you for entering the competition and sticking with us through uh, the hoops that we've gone through from first planning this live and then planning it virtually and then the technical difficulties that we had tonight. I'm really glad that you guys um, did so well and, and had so much fun during this event. Um, I'd also like to thank everybody working behind the scenes, all of the wizards behind the curtain, if you will. So we all met Nick Lewis earlier. Um, he is the true tech wizard uh, producing all of this from behind the scenes. He's actually a, a salesperson. He's the state manager for DC and Maryland area uh, that just happens to be a tech whiz. So he has been working to produce this behind the scenes, keep everybody connected, keep all those assets coming in and did a wonderful job. So thank you, Nick. Uh, we also have Michael Powell, our creative director that created everything branded that you see. Anything with our logo, uh, anything printed and, and shared on screen was his creation. Uh, he also makes our bottles look so beautiful and, and elegant on the shelves. So uh, props to Michael for everything that he does for the company and for World Stop Whiskey Taster. And then last but not least, we have Laurel Altman, who is our scorekeeper tonight, who fell off for a few minutes there. Uh, but that's 2020, right? That's the world that we live in. Uh, she did a great job volunteering her time. Uh, the biggest contribution that she made was not keeping score, but producing all of the World's Top Whiskey Taster events. Um, so she was the point person for organizing all of this um, for, on every end. So a huge thanks to her. Um, and thank you to everybody at home that watched and viewed and supported us and stuck with us as we stumbled on some internet for a while. It means a whole lot. We wish we could have brought you guys out and it means so much to us that you still uh, joined uh, virtually to, to see how these competitions unfold. So we appreciate that very much. Uh, with that said, uh, I'd like to give the final reveal uh, to the both of you. So you both did wonderful. There were 10 points to give, a two point difference between the two of you. And let's see how the final scores look and who our regional champion is. Guys, let's pull the scores up on screen. And it's, it is Jeff Clark, who is the, 
uh, regional champion for World Stop Whiskey Taster. Um, David, you were only four points behind. You did so well. This was not an easy one to judge, especially with just two of you. I, I think you both are well-deserved of being the regional champion, but Jeff, congratulations. congratulations. Um, let's spotlight Jeff's video. Give him a round of applause from our homes and our couches. Uh, way to go, Jeff. Uh, you deserve it. How are you feeling about being the regional champion? I'm not, I'm, I almost spilled my glass. <laughs> I'm a nervous wreck. <laughs> I'm, I am so excited. This is a passion. I love it. I love the art. I love blending. I just, I love the, everything about it. And this is just, this is just a fantastic opportunity. And I just can't, I can't be more thankful. Thank you so much. Oh, well, we are thankful to you, Jeff, and you, David, as well, for, for participating and giving it all you had. Uh, you're both world's top whiskey tasters in my heart, and uh, I hope to see you both come here uh, to visit and, and hang out with us as, as part of the family someday. So, uh, Jeff, I can't wait to bring you out to Bardstown Bourbon Company for the grand finale uh, to see if the world's top whiskey taster is, in fact, a Hoosier. Uh, Sean's rooting for you. So, and I know a lot of people at home uh, are, are rooting for you as well. So I uh, can't wait to bring you out here. Uh, folks, thanks for uh, chiming in on the comments. Thanks for viewing. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for, um, you know, supporting Jeff and David and Bardstown Bourbon Company. We've had a great time tonight. Uh, we are going to host another regional competition tomorrow uh, with contestants from the Florida area. So if you would like to see who is going to be competing against Jeff to claim that title, uh, tune in, same time, same place, 6 p.m. Eastern time on our Facebook channel and on our YouTube channel as well. Um, have a drink, unwind, and uh, we love everybody. So we'll see you next time. Thank you guys.